Prime Minister applauds churches' work in health and education. Freedom in movement for new PNG citizens and mobile clinic to bring services to Anglimp South Waki. This is National MTV News with Meriba Tolo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Monday's news. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill reiterated the significant contributions of churches in the education and health sector of service delivery. This morning, the Prime Minister attended the opening of the National United Foursquare Women's Convention in Port Moresby. He thanked the Foursquare Church for its contributions to service delivery and also highlighted the roles women play in communities. He said women deserve to be respected. The Prime Minister donated 200,000 kina to assist the Foursquare women. Mr O'Neill said the government would continue to partner with churches to deliver basic services in health and education throughout the country. Freedom of movement has been on the mind of former West Papuan refugee Elias Torip for over 30 years. Now that he has his PNG citizenship, he will be able to access services around the country. Elias was one of many refugees in Western Province who were given special consideration by the national government to be granted PNG citizenship last week. Elias Torip was just 10 years old when his family left their home in West Papua and came to PNG. Today he is a primary school teacher at East Owens Monfort Primary School. We stopped 32 years now. Since 1984 we moved to West Papua or Indonesia. We come to the Brusim border, come along all border villages. We call him um, Alice. Alice side, we come to the Brusim border. Plus jogging, I missed up long up uh, to play our penis long 1987. Uh, we moved come to Yawara. Like other West Papuan refugees, he always wanted to leave the East Awin refugee camp and look for a better life elsewhere, but couldn't do so because he was not a PNG citizen. But that changed last week. He was one of over a thousand refugees in Western Province who were given PNG citizenship. So me and my mama must straight long. Sometimes we can see this plan. We can make it. Uh, it's eligible for me to move around in this country and uh, of course long outside country like was in Australia. Today, these people, once known as political refugees, can now take part in national events like the coming national elections, and more importantly, have better access to services around the country. You got right now long participate in local process also. But this local kind of process, you got responsibility too, huh? You yeah, must vote law right way. Must walk him something long. Right way, must look so long. Law of this black country. Immigration boss Solomon Kanta says more West Papuan refugees around the country will be given PNG citizenship in the coming months. Long Bedang Lay, Long Wewek, Panimo, you got the little group is stop long Mosby, Law NCD. All two be by people go, but people think of them. You plan long, Yawara, long, East Awin is special group. Because, okay, there's something been start here, huh? Stanley Ove Jr., National MTV News. A group of 10 soldiers and police are still deployed in Sialum in Morabem, following ongoing tensions in the area. The troops were flown in two weeks ago after a man was killed during a fight. Sialum is one of many hotspots in Morabe that don't have permanent police presence. Morabe's provincial police commander, Augustin Wampe, says the policemen will have to be recalled for the upcoming election operations. Fighting could resume in the area. In Garaina, tensions are also high following separate killings, but police have been unable to travel due to lack of funds. The people of Jiwaka province now have access to a proper clinic facility following the launching of the mobile clinic in Anglim South Wagi. Last Friday, Anglim South Wagi MP Komun Joy Koem launched the mobile clinic which was purchased using District Support Improvement Program funds. Two vehicles were also donated to Minge Police and the Lutheran Church. Last Friday was the last day of Anglim South Wagi MP Komun Joy Koem to launch the district projects under the five-year plan before the election. Among other projects was the mobile clinic. Two trucks were turned into a clinic. The equipment is still in America 
and will be shipped to Papua New Guinea soon. The trucks will contain a hospital bed, a nurse station, a toilet, medical equipment, including a scanner for cancer patients. The District Development Authority partnered with OSAID and invested 1.2 million kina into the purchasing of the mobile clinic. Some other projects for the electorate that were already launched were the sealing of roads, buying of banana boats for people who live near the Wagi River, buying of sawmill and excavators. The people of Anglim South Wagi also partnered with microfinance and opened their bank accounts and received loans to start up businesses. Last Friday, a Land Cruiser Toyota Hilux was also presented to the Minch Police to boost their policing activity in the electorate. Another vehicle was donated to the Lutheran Church. <laughs> The two trucks for the mobile clinic will be based in Mount Hagen General Hospital until the equipment arrived from America. There will be two doctors, two nurses and two sisters working in each truck. They will visit each villages in the electorate weekly. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Jiwaka. Here with National MTV News, we'll have more stories after these messages. Welcome back to the news. With just days to go before the issue of writs for the 2017 national general elections, Governor of Jiwaka Province, Dr. William Tonga, has joined Sir Peter Epata's People's Party. The Governor made the announcement today in Port Moresby. Jiwaka Governor Dr. William Tongam joined the People's Party led by Grand Chief Se Peter Ipatas. Party leader Se Peter Ipatas welcomed Dr. Tongam to his party, which will have a total of 30 candidates vying for the national elections. Six of them are current members of parliament. These uh, are the future leaders. And uh, uh, we've got Governor for uh, Jiwaka joining the party. And of course, you can see with me Dr. Hani, who is also uh, our candidate for uh, uh, Ella. Uh, Ella Regional. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we're trying to uh, get a, a lot of good qualified, uh, you know, young Papua New Guinea Senator Party so that they can carry our vision and policy uh, towards, uh, uh, you know, for the next generation of leadership. Dr. Tongam's announcement to join People's Party came days before the issue of writs for the 2017 national elections. Dr. Tongam was a former member of the New Generation Party. Uh, I would also like to thank the uh, New Generation Party, Billy uh, Sopa uh, and the member for Manus, uh, Ronnie Knight, and other executives that we've worked together in the last five years. Uh, I've uh, personally made a decision to uh, join the uh, People's Party in the coming elections. And I uh, also would like to thank uh, Sir Pile Paris, uh, Governor for Inga Province, uh, for um, inviting me to join the party and I'm looking forward to uh, working closely on this leadership. Uh, I'm also excited because he's, uh, he's the longest serving uh, governor in the country and also very senior uh, leader in the country. Eric Arupma, National MTV News. Former Western Province Governor Dr. Bob Danaya is demanding the National Government, Western Provincial Executive Council and Acting Governor Roy Biyama to rescind the recent appointment of the Western Provincial Administrator. Danaya said the timing for the appointment is not right because writs will be issued this week and there was no proper consultation with the people. He claimed the appointment is an attempt by the National Government to access PNG Sustainable Development Program funds invested in Singapore. I want to express this in the strongest terms possible to the Prime Minister through the NEC at the national level and the Fly Provincial Executive Council that what has transpired in the appointment of this new, new administrator for Western province 
has been done not in the best interest of the people of Western Province. Meanwhile, a statement from Acting Governor of Western Province, Roy Biyama, has reacted to Mr. Danaya, urging him not to cause instability in the province in the lead-up to the elections. Mr. Biyama said the appointment of a new provincial administrator by the Provincial Executive Committee was conducted through correct legal processes and the decision will remain in effect. He said it was in the best interest of the people to have a functioning provincial administration and not be left without leadership until August. Birth complications can be avoided if there is regular consultation between doctors and nursing professionals. Antenatal care is important to help in the physical and mental preparation for a successful delivery. However, a nursing professional says most women seek antenatal care in the late stages of pregnancy, which can result in birth complications. Fabian Hakalitz reports from Buka. The 36 weeks of pregnancy must be discussed with medical professionals like doctors or midwives to ensure health of the pregnant women and the growing fetus is well maintained. Overall, this is to reduce the risk of pregnancy complications and the infant. According to Sister Ludwina Nai, who is the Deputy Director of Nursing of the Bugajral Hospital, having a healthy pregnancy is one of the best ways to promote a healthy birth. I think it's due to um, fetal distress. That's why they ended up in surgery. We, we in here, we are focused on saving the lives of mothers and babies. That is why when the nurses are here, they observe patients, they see that there are complications there, they consult with their uh, specialist. Most young women do not make it their business to visit antenatal care clinics. However, do when it's almost four to five months into their pregnancies. While reasons may vary for each woman due to cultural beliefs or stigma and discrimination after being tested positive on HIV and age. However, the important thing is for a healthy pregnancies and one of the best ways is to promote healthy births and to avoid maternal deaths. Research has shown that many women discover they are being pregnant into the late pregnancies and also do not visit the antenatal care clinics at an early stage. That is how mothers are taken into the um, operating theatre for surgery to um, uh, relieve mothers who are having uh, severe contractions due to uh, most probably labour pains. Getting early and regular prenatal care clinics improves the chances of a healthy pregnancy and the World Health Organization recommends that at least four visits to an antenatal clinic during pregnancy. In Boca, Fabian Hucklitz, National MTV News. The Menyamia district last Friday saw the opening of several vital infrastructure, among them five police houses. The houses will accommodate five new officers who will help the only policeman in the district. It is not an easy task for policing at Manyamia, rugged terrain and secluded settlements. This vehicle is being driven by the only regular police officer in the district. The rest are reservists. Missed up um, almost 15 years now. Now, in general, 15 years, um, my experience in plan the heavy side law work now. Side law me to all man threatening me one family one them. But me stop yet. Uh, 2014, number five moon. Or boss be my game 18 coming up now. I think almost three years. So lo yeah, me name one can kind of same highlands. Complain one and something every day I'm complain them stop. Now me one hard. Before you got plan the policeman, I'm 15 or 20 years in Minyame. Constable Kisa is part of the Moraba Rural Command, a group of dedicated police officers who are hampered by a dire need for resources. The command looks after the other eight districts of the province. It depends on the uh, f district uh, administration's uh, funding. If uh, the, we are going towards the national election and we, don't, we, do, we do not know if uh, the current sitting MP will maintain the, uh, the district, I mean maintain his position as uh, the next uh, MP. 
that we do, do not know because he mentioned that uh, he will fund the police and all these activities uh, in the district so that uh, police can come. The housing is part of the district's one million kina grant from the government's rural housing program. So me yet me member me go sit down one them. Uh, PPC and more the time me talk us and you must work in Mausa. Number me selling political. So now I'm for blah, for blah police uh, house now me blah open him now as they. Now me challenge him uh, uh, PPC. Uh, Morbe Promiser uh, Police Commander, long Emmy can sell him pipe, uh, police money come here. Yeah. Harry Egimbari, National MTV News, Lay. You're with National MTV News. When we return, stories making headlines for overseas. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas now, Pope Francis has used his Easter sermon to condemn the suicide bombing on the outskirts of Syrian city, Aleppo, calling it a vile attack. 126 civilians were killed, including more than 60 children, when the convoy of buses was targeted. 60,000 Catholic pilgrims pouring into St. Peter's Square under tight security. The threat of terrorism looming. Pope Francis stepping out on the balcony using the traditional Easter message to condemn Saturday's massive car bombing of buses carrying Syrian families trying to evacuate. Yesterday saw the latest vile attack on fleeing refugees, he said. The blast engulfing the buses in flames, killing more than 120, a staggering 60 children among the dead. Others left bloodied and badly wounded. The horrifying images evoking memories of the chemical attack earlier this month. But this was a suicide bombing. The residents leaving their villages as part of a swap agreement between rebels and the regime. Tonight, the latest attempt to move roughly 3,000 Syrians trapped by fighting stalled. In his mass, the Pope adding an off-the-cuff sermon, acknowledging an abundance of war, sickness and hatred in the world, asking Christians to open their hearts to those suffering. Why do so many misfortunes happen? Where is the Lord? The pontiff then crisscrossing the square in his Pope mobile, not threatened by the attacks on churches in Egypt at the start of the Holy Week. The United States Vice President says the era of patience with North Korea is over. Mike Pence made the comment during a visit to the demilitarized zone on the border of North and South Korea. It comes after Pyongyang tried and failed another ballistic missile test. This flower show, like almost everything else in North Korea, is dedicated to its ruling family. So, this is the stand of national defense industry. And this display is in honor of their abiding obsession, missiles. Is it a little strange to have rockets and missiles in a flower show? No, not, not strange at all. There, there are reports that there was a missile test yeah. and some suggestions that it failed. Have you heard these reports? This is not a failure. We'll win and we will have a greater successes in the future. The timing of the latest missile test is significant, coming just a few hours before the US Vice President Mike Pence arrived in the South Korean capital, Seoul. It's a message of defiance from here in Pyongyang. Its quest to become a fully-fledged nuclear power continues. At its big military parade yesterday, it put some of its newest missiles on display. The decades of threats and sanctions against North Korea have clearly done little to stop it. Mr Pence's talks will focus on trying to find something that will work. This is a challenging time all over the world, but especially here in the Asia Pacific. But let me assure you, under under President Trump's leadership, our resolve has never been stronger. North Korea appears confident that President Trump's threats will turn out to be hollow and that he'll conclude, like others before him, that war carries far too many risks. A huge manhunt is underway in America for a gunman who used Facebook to broadcast a murder. It's alleged the suspect live-streamed the moment he killed an elderly stranger on the street in Cleveland, Ohio. Facebook says the shooting was not broadcast live, but recorded and then uploaded. 
The senseless murder too gruesome to show. A man identified by police as Steve Stevens gets out of his car and stops an apparent stranger. All right. Can you do me a favor? Can you say Joy Lane? Can you say Joy Lane? Joy Lane? Yeah. She's the reason why um, this is about to happen to you. How old are you? Oh, man, look. look. Then shooting him point blank with a pistol, the cold-blooded killing broadcast live on Facebook. From what we can tell now, it's just a random person that he picked out. Uh, we don't know why. The shooter then gets back into his vehicle and calmly drives off. And just as chilling, the suspects claim to have killed many others. The victim has been identified as 74-year-old Robert Godwin Sr. His family is in shock. I don't know what I'm going to do. It it's, feel like it's not real. So far, no additional victims have been found. Stevens was last seen in a white Ford Fusion with temporary tags, wearing a dark blue and gray or black striped polo shirt. He is six foot one, 244 pounds. We want him to turn himself in. We'll look uh, until we find him. In a statement to ABC News, Facebook says this is a horrific crime, and we do not allow this kind of content on Facebook. The people of Turkey are waking up to a new political reality. The country's president has won the referendum vote and has promised major constitutional changes. However, critics have warned it may mean a one-man rule. Victors were out in force, celebrating as though they'd won by a big majority instead of by a whisker. In fact, here in Istanbul and in Turkey's two other largest cities, Izmir and in Ankara, the capital, the no campaign seems actually to have won. There is a big underlying level of, of nervousness and anger here, which really the result of this referendum being so close hasn't done anything to calm down. Tayyip Erdogan will be a world leader, God willing, says this man. No, 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 no. This is the history, history. However slight his majority in the referendum, President Erdogan has taken the decision to push through his far-reaching constitutional changes. This is not an ordinary decision. This is not an ordinary day. Very serious changes are in the way for Turkey's future. Amen. bu konuyu... His argument all along has been that only a really strong presidency can galvanize Turkey into being successful and wealthy. So he's getting rid of the old constitution's checks and balances. He's giving himself the power to hire and fire the country's judges. And he's made it possible for himself to stay as president until 2029. There have been one or two small opposition demonstrations but he's stamped down so hard on his opponents in recent years that they're reluctant to come out onto the streets in any great numbers. This has indeed been a day on which history was made, but it's likely to cut Turkey off further from its old allies in Western Europe and America. What we've seen today looks like a major change of course. France is days away from deciding a new political future. The presidential election has got a dozen candidates, each of them with different approaches of how to deal with Russia. Many are now concerned about Moscow meddling with the election. The choice facing French voters is stark. Eleven candidates with radically different visions of what the future should be. Of them, the two frontrunners have almost diametrically opposed proposals. On one hand, a stronger relationship with Europe and a tough approach to Russia. On the other, a referendum on leaving the EU and a closer relationship with Moscow. It's a rapprochement that Marine Le Pen has already started working on with a visit to Moscow. Vladimir Putin took the opportunity to state Russia's position. We do not want to influence events in any way. But inside Emmanuel Macron's headquarters, the fear is that Moscow has been trying to help Marine Le Pen. His campaign manager says they are being targeted by both cyber attacks and fake news. Emmanuel Macron, is... Emmanuel Macron wants a strong European Union. And we know that the strategy of those countries that don't want a strong Europe means making him lose the election. 
So is Russia interfering in France's presidential campaign as it is alleged to have done in the American poll? France's internet watchdog has warned of the danger of cyber interference. We asked an expert on French cybersecurity whether he thought Russia was involved. Yeah, probably. Just like the United States has been interfering in many, <coughs> many presidential elections around the world for the past, I don't know, 50 years at least, just like France has been interfering in almost every African presidential election since the well, last 60, 70 years. It's the way democracy works around the world. The trouble, says Fabrice, is that it is impossible, given the sophistication of the technology, to determine where a particular hack originated. CNN reached out to the Kremlin to get their response. A spokesman said, We strongly disagree with these accusations. They are groundless. Moscow was not involved in any cyber attacks and can't be involved. So what about fake news? At the French Daily Le Monde, a special unit was set up in which 12 journalists work to identify and debunk fake news. Adrien Seneca tells us that the French presidential campaign has seen partisan news from Russian media, but not fake news, that is, news stories that are entirely made up. They have tended, he says, to come from inside France. The top stories that were wrong these past couple of months on the French internet were uh, mostly uh, being made up by uh, far-right websites or far-right partisans or far-right Facebook pages and uh, they mostly targeted migrants or uh, medias or Emmanuel Macron. For those inside Emmanuel Macron's campaign headquarters, fake news stories targeting their candidate are all the more worrying because of the nature of his electorate. It is untested because he's never stood before and the polls suggest much more volatile than Marine Le Pen's. In short, he has many more people to convince and the fear here is that some may be all too easily put off. You're watching National Limb TV News. Up next, some sporting updates in Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. We begin with lawn bowls and the PNG Open Bowling Tournament has seen the country's best take to the green. Bowlers from across the country converge in the nation's capital as the PNG Open Championships looks at further talent identification and growing their player base. Having started the competition on Friday with the men's fours and women's singles, the PNG Open has now gone on to see the men's pairs and women's triples event. While they may not have the same crowd numbers as other more popular sports, the PNG Lawn Bowls Open has seen good competition with the finals scheduled for Tuesday. We had the results uh, for those two disciplines, uh, the men's uh, course and the ladies' uh, singles. Uh, we have the winner for the ladies' singles, who is the, the national champion now, is uh, Aloha Bavona, and runner-up uh, is uh, Alina Boino from Lay and uh, Piwan Kaka. A number of clubs are taking part in the tournament, coming from Leh, Bulolo, Mount Hagen, Medang and Port Moresby, with the tournament featuring PNG champions in their respective divisions. National Tournament Director Albert Barakena has been happy so far with both the turnout of bowlers and the standard of competition. If we can use it openly, uh, frequently with our competition, I think the way I see forward is to get the players to uh, challenge uh, uh, teams outside of I mean, other countries uh, by actually playing in this particular surface. And that, so far, we, the way we are going, I'm pretty sure we will produce top bowlers uh, from Papua New Guinea. With the facilities at international standard, there is hope that they will be able to host major tournaments in the future, with PNG having taken part in a number of events, such as the Junior World Titles, the Asia Pacific Championships, and Commonwealth and Pacific Games. Definitely we have uh, that idea in the pipeline. Uh, so far we're trying to get our in-house uh, uh, in order. And in, in fact, uh, I was talking to the interim chairman, President Kevin Kautu, and we have a future of international games in Papua New Guinea, yes. A junior program is also in the pipeline, as the PNG Bowling Federation looks to expand its competition. Jeremy Moggy, National TV Sports. 
Pari Village opened the 2017 Easter Sports Competition today, sponsored by NCD Governor Paul Spako. The open day attracted many athletes from Port Mosby, nearby suburbs and even the NCD Police Band. At least close to 400 athletes and invited guests were invited to Pari Village to witness the 2017 Sports Open. Sporting teams came in their group colours as well as church groups in the village. <laughs> Event organiser Killer Dick said the village of Pari was chosen to host this year's Easter sports tournament apart from the usual inner suburb tournaments. Uh, to have our first Easter 2017 holiday Easter games uh, to be hosted by uh, Pari Village and Pari community. So it's a wonderful thing I guess trying to allow the village people to showcase what they have uh, in terms of Peroveta and uh, uh, traditional aspects of how they go about their, their livelihood in the, in the capital city. He said while focusing on human development, especially with youths in the community, today that sport is the answer to change. Starting tomorrow, touch and volleyball will be included in the event. It's going to take four days. We'll start tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, and we'll finish on Friday. So it's uh, sort of a week's uh, activity. Today is an important day for the opening ceremony. Uh, it's purely the opening ceremony because there's a lot of things that are happening uh, during the opening ceremony as well. The sports event will start tomorrow and end on Friday following presentations of cash prizes. We have targeted four sports in this year's uh, Easter Games. Uh, for 2017, that's uh, netball, basketball, volleyball and touch. And upon the expression of interest, we've noticed that uh, volleyball and touch have picked up. There's a lot of interest for volleyball and netball, uh, for volleyball and touch footy, unlike uh, basketball and, uh, and netball. I think uh, these two sports, we need to do a lot more um, uh, intervention in some of these sports that are not picking up uh, uh, a lot of support. Whereas volleyball and touch, we see that there's a lot of interest because the sport's always played all the time. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. Two rugby servants in the autonomous region of Bougainville, the Bougainville Rugby Union has hosted the 2017 Easter Sevens Cup tournament at Hoko in the Hagogohe constituency of Buka Island. The grand finals were held today in the cup, plate and bowl, with teams competing in the men's and women's division. Bougainville's own and homegrown Puk Puk's player Nathan Barman was straight back to local duty in developing rugby in the region. Prize money is worth over 19,000 kina, with the winners to walk away with a total cash prize. The Easter Cup is supported by Haloma Trading, Pacific Industries and club sponsors of Bougainville Rugby. Trukai Sports continues after these messages. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. To football, the PNG men's national football team has jumped 14 places up the FIFA Coca-Cola World Rankings. The couple's back-to-back -back outstanding performance on the international stage put them on number 156, although we didn't change their third ranking within the region. History very much in favour of Tahiti with PNG... Papua New Guinea is in third place behind Tahiti and New Zealand, who continues to sit at the top of the region after holding their ranking of 112 in the FIFA World Rankings. Warasan against McGlinchey, and that's a good penalty. New Zealand. A year of record-breaking success from the couples is responsible for Papua New Guinea's massive shift dating back to their historic 2016 OFC Nations Cup campaign on home soil. Additional time at the end of the first half, a 1-0 up. Following their OFC Nations Cup campaign, Papua New Guinea played two home and away matches against 157th ranked Malaysia, winning the home leg 2 0 in June last year and just falling short in the away leg with a 2 1 loss in November. The success on the international field has attracted attention from around the world, and opportunities have opened for couples to play football in countries such as USA and Netherlands. This has only strengthened the team more as overseas base players return to the national team, bringing new experience and styles of football. PNG will have a chance to further improve their reputation as a growing football force when they take on Solomon Islands on 9th and 10th June in their last matches of Group B in the 2018 FIFA World Cup Russia OFC Stage 3 qualifiers. 38 minutes in, 
And Foster, who's had a couple of chances, is off. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. To international cricket, exactly a year after his last appearance in the Indian competition, New Zealand fast bowler Adam Milne appears as sharp as ever for the challenge in Bangalore. Glad to be back on the big stage. After only three domestic first-class games since his last appearance in Bengaluru, Adam Milne was immediately making an impression against the rising Pune super giant. Yeah, he's got a smooth run up and just as he lets go of the ball, there's a little bit of Jimmy Anderson. Just a little bit there in his actions. The 25-year-old did take some tap. Oh, the charge! But skipper Virat Kohli kept the faith, bringing him back at the death, and he knocked over Ben Stokes. What's up in here? And then was on a hat-trick, thanks to a slick A.B. de Villiers catch. While he didn't get the three for Milne, who made his T20 debut seven years ago, was just pleased to come through in one piece. It's awesome playing, playing in this team, a great group of guys and a great crowd to play for. Captain Coley looked like knocking off the 162-run target in no time. But Stokes got rid of him. Up in the air, should be taken now. And Milne was his third wicket in a man-of-the-match performance in a 27-run win. Meanwhile, Mitchell McLenaghan had another good day out for the Mumbai Indians as Brendan McCallum's Gujarat Lions struggled early. But he did appreciate Lasith Malinga. Up and that's huge. That could be our first. Yes, bank maximum. There's a second one. And he anchored the innings with 64 of the 176 runs. Every team in this competition has got destructive batters, so we're going to make sure we're on song with the ball and also we're going to make sure we're very, very good in the field. Now they were neither and slumped to a six-wicket loss. And that's how we end Trukai Sports. Don't go away. Up next, the all-important weather report for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Here's a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, Port Moresby and Daru. Cloudy periods with light to moderate showers tonight with a top temperature of 31 degrees. Kerma, a few showers with possible thunderstorms. Alutau, mostly fine, and then becoming cloudy with a chance of light rain showers developing. To the Momasa region, Lei, cloudy periods with a few showers tonight. Medang, cloudy periods with a chance of light showers. Showers this evening, then mostly fine for Wewak and mostly fine for Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorangau, a few overnight rain showers with thunderstorms. Kavian, Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbia, cloudy periods with a chance of light rain and showers developing. And Buka, cloudy periods with a shower or two tonight. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect a shower or two with morning fog. And a look at the forecast for small ships. There is a strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, to Yule Island, Hood Point, Samurai Island and including Milne Bay Islands. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerama, Yule Island, Hood Point, Samurai Island and waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands sees 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Kerma with waters of Medang, Bogia, Wiwek, Aitape, Vanimo and the northern PNG Indonesian border with waters of Manus and its western group of islands and waters of New Island to east and west New Britain and Bougainville sees 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchafen sees 1.5 to 2 meters. And waters of Finchafen through Vitia Strait, Dampier Strait, including Siasi Island to Long Island and Medang, sees 1 to 1.5 meters.
And a look at the ocean forecasts, Coral Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeasterly winds at 15 to 25 knots. Solomon Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeasterly winds at 15 to 25 knots as well. Bismarck Sea sees slight with northwest to southwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees slight with northeast to northwesterly winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And there has been the news, sports and weather for tonight, Monday the 17th of April 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night. <laughs>